Okay, hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be walking through six exam paper questions, past exam paper questions, and they are all going to be reacting masses calculations. These are usually worth about three or four marks. Um, and the best thing to do is to read the question on the screen, pause the video, have a go at the question yourself, and then replay the video once you've had a go and see if you've got it right and where you might have gone wrong. Okay, so here's question one. Have a read and have a go at the question. Pause the video and replay it when you're done. So this question is asking you for the mass of zinc. So I'm going to write zinc first of all. Um, and I'm given information about iodine. So I'm forming a sort of table with zinc as one column and iodine as the other column. And we can see the formula for iodine in the equation there, it's I2. We are told a mass of iodine, so my first row in the column is going to be a uh, row for mass. So under iodine, I'm just going to write 0 0.5 grams because that's what we've been, we've been told in the question. Other information we've been told are some MRs, some relative atomic masses. So I'm going to go ahead and put that as my next row. And the relative atomic mass of one iodine atom is 127. But you can see in, an, in iodine, it's actually a molecule made out of two atoms. So I need to times that by two to get the MR of I2. And that's 254. When you've got a mass and an MR, you can work out the number of moles, N. Okay, you can, you can do that by doing mass divided by MR. So that is going to be 0 0.5 divided by 2,5. Oops, <laughs> that came out like 3, 2, 5, 4. And that is 1.97 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Okay, the next thing we need to look at here is that something called the mo mole ratio. Uh, you get the mole ratio from the numbers in front of each reactant or product in the chemical equation. So you can see there's no number in front of zinc, which means one mole of zinc, and there's no number in front of the iodine, which means one mole of iodine. So what we're saying is every one mole of zinc reacts exactly with one mole of iodine in this equation. If you had two moles of zinc, that would react exactly with two moles of iodine. If you had five moles of zinc, it would react with five moles of iodine. But we don't have any of those numbers. We have this amount of iodine, that many moles. So that same number of moles of zinc will react with that many moles of iodine. Okay, so now we've got uh, the number of moles of zinc. We can work our way up and write down the MR of zinc. <clears throat> We're given that in the question, or you can get it from your periodic table. It's 65. And the final step is to work out the mass. We know that number of moles is mass divided by MR. So I'm going to substitute my numbers in here first. My number of moles is 1.97 times 10 to the minus 3. I don't know the mass yet, but I need to divide by the MR, which is 65. So to get mass, I just do 1.97 times 10 to the minus 3 times 65. Okay, I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to go over to this space I've got over here. Uh, that number on my calculator comes out as 0 0.127957, blah, blah, blah. It goes on. So some students worry about what they should round their number to. And usually a good clue is looking in the question. So in the question, we are told this, that there's 0 0.500 grams of iodine. They have given that mass to three significant figures. So you start counting any number that's not a zero from the front, 
So we start counting at this number five. That's the first significant figure. That's the second one, and that's the third one. So there are three significant figures. So I'm going to round my answer to three significant figures, which is cutting it off there. So since this number here is a nine, I need to round up. So my mass is not 0.128 grams of zinc. Here's question two. Have a go at the question. Pause the video. When you've given it a good shot, restart the video and see how you did. So we are told about copper chloride in this question. So I'm going to make copper chloride one of my uh, columns in this sort of table I'm constructing. And we are asked about copper carbonate. So I'm going to make copper carbonate my other column. We are told the mass of copper chloride is 11 grams. So I'm going to make mass my first row. And I'm going to write 11 grams under copper chloride. We are given some relative atomic masses so we can calculate MR. In copper chloride, there is just one copper atom because there's no number following that Cu for copper. So we've just got 63.5, which we are told is the mass of copper. We need to add on the other atoms in that compound. And there are uh, two chlorine atoms. So I'm going to do two times the relative atomic mass of chlorine, which is 35.5. When you add all that together, you get 134.5. So since we've got a mass and an MR, we can work out number of moles. Number of moles is the mass divided by the MR. So we're doing 11 divided by 134.5. And that comes to... 0.0818 moles. Now we need to look at the mole ratio. So in the equation, there is no number in front of copper carbonate and there is no number in front of copper chloride. So in chemistry, when there's no number, it means one. So we can interpret this equation to mean every one mole of copper carbonate that reacts, you will make theoretically, one mole of copper chloride. So whatever number of moles you have of copper carbonate, you will make that exact same number of moles of copper chloride. So since we've worked out we make 0 0.0818 moles of copper chloride, that is the amount that must have reacted. So uh, the MR, we can work out just the same as before. We're adding up the relative atomic masses of every single atom in that compound. So again, there's just one mole of copper because there's no little number after it. The mass of copper we are given is 63.5. There is one carbon atom, which is 12. And there are three oxygen atoms. So I need to do three times 16. All of that comes to 1, 2, 3.5. Oops. 1, 2, 3.5. So now we can work out the mass because we're using the equation N equals M over MR. And I'm just going to substitute in the numbers that I know so far. So we know N is 0 0.0818. We don't know the mass. We're trying to work that out. And we divide by the MR, which we calculated to be 123.5. So we need to rearrange and make M the subject, which means we're going to do 0.0818 times 123.5. And that comes to 10.1 grams. That comes to 10.1 grams. I have rounded that to three significant figures because in the question I was given this mass to three significant figures. Okay, on your screen is question three. Have a go at the question and replay the video when you're ready. So we've been given information about magnesium. So magnesium is going to form one of my columns in my table. And we've been asked to calculate the mass of magnesium oxide. So that's going to be my other column. 
mass is going to be the first row and I'm going to enter in what I already know which is that there's one gram of magnesium. I can work out MRs from the numbers I've been given. Uh, just one atom of magnesium is 24. When you've got a mass and an MR, you can work out number of moles. Number of moles is mass divided by MR. So that's one divided by 24. And that comes to 0, 0.0. 417 moles. Now we need to look at the mole ratio. So in this equation at the top, there is no number in front of magnesium and there is no number in front of magnesium oxide. So it's the same as the previous two questions. Every one mole of magnesium will produce one mole of magnesium oxide. Or in other words, whatever number of moles of magnesium you have, you will make the exact same number of moles of magnesium oxide. So we have 0.0417 moles of magnesium being reacted, so that exact amount of moles can be made of magnesium oxide. The MR of magnesium oxide, we've got one atom of magnesium plus one atom of oxygen, so that comes to 40. Again, we need this equation, number of moles is the mass divided by the MR. I'm going to enter in the numbers I know so far, so I know N is 0.0417. Don't know the mass yet, but the MR is 40. So rearrange to make mass the subject, and you end up with 0.0417 times 40, which comes to 1.6666 dot dot dot. So in the question right here, we are given uh, the mass of magnesium to three significant figures. So I'm going to round this answer to three significant figures as well. So I'm cutting it off here. Since this number to the right of my dashed line is five or above, I'm going to round up. So it becomes 1.67 grams of magnesium oxide. Here's question four. Pause the video, have a go, and restart the video when you're ready. So we have been asked to calculate the mass of iron chloride, and we're told that's FeCl3. So since we've been asked to find out something about that, it's going to need to be part of our table that we're forming. So I'm going to write that here. And we've been given information about iron. So iron is going to be the other column in my table. First row is going to be mass, and I'm going to fill in what I know, the 11.2 grams of iron. Next up, we can calculate MR. So the MR of just one iron atom is just its relative atomic mass, 56, which we've been told right here. When you've got a mass and an MR, you can work out the number of moles. Number of moles is the mass divided by the MR. So we're doing 11.2 divided by 56. And that comes to 0.2 moles. Now we need to look into the mole ratio. So two moles of iron when reacted, form two moles of iron chloride, two to two. So this is just the same as a one-to-one -one ratio. Whatever number of moles of iron react, that exact same number of moles of iron chloride will be made. And we react 0 0.2 moles in this question, so 0 0.2 moles will be made. Now for the MR, we've got one iron atom, which is 56, added to three chlorine atoms. And that comes to 162.5. So I'm going to use the same equation. Number of moles is mass divided by MR. Once you plug in those numbers and rearrange, you end up with mass is 0.2 times 
162.5 and that comes to 32.5 exactly grams. Okay, here's question five. Pause the video, have a go and restart when you're ready. So we have been told about the aluminium oxide. So I'm going to make that one of my columns in my table. Uh, we're given the formula of aluminium oxide in the equation. It's Al2O3. And we've been, we've been asked to calculate a mass of oxygen. So oxygen needs to be the other column. And again, pay attention to what they've given you in the equation. They've told you oxygen is O2. Okay, since we've been given a mass, that's going to be my first row. Uh, and we're told 2,000 kilograms of <clears throat> aluminium oxide. So we don't want a mass in kilograms in chemistry. When we get round to using the equation number of moles is mass divided by MR, you need the mass to be in grams. Okay, so you need to times by a thousand which is 2 million grams. Okay, then we need to calculate MR. So uh, we've got two aluminium atoms here, so it's two times 27 plus three oxygen atoms, three times 16. That MR comes to 102. Then we need to calculate number of moles. Number of moles is mass divided by the MR which is 2 million grams divided by 102. So we get 19607.8 moles, and that is rounded. So make sure you save it in your calculator me memory so you can not round too early in your calculation. Right, from the equation, we can see we've got two moles of aluminium oxide forming three moles of oxygen. So we've got a two to three ratio here. To get from the number two to the number three, to get from two moles to three moles, you have to divide by two and then times by three. To get from the number two to three, you have to divide by two to get one and then times it by three and then you get the three. So since that's the way, to get from the aluminium oxide moles to the oxygen moles, I'm going to do that with my mole number here. I'm going to divide by 2 and times by 3. And that gives 29411.8 moles. The MR of oxygen, well, there are two oxygen atoms in O2. So it's 2 times 16, which is 32. And number of moles is mass divided by the MR. So we need to plug in the numbers and rearrange to make M the subject. And we end up with 29411.8 times 32. And that comes out as 9411.8. 0.47 grams. However, it says to answer in kilograms. It doesn't actually say that in the question, but the bit that I cut off is the space to write your answers. And the answer line looked like this. It was a line and then it had kilograms. So it shows they want you to convert this mass to kilograms. So we need to divide by a thousand. And that comes out as nine. I don't know why I wrote a two. That comes out as nine four one kilograms. Okay, here's the last question, question six. This one's a little bit different to the others, but still give it a go. See if you can work out what it's asking of you and restart the video when you're ready. So we are told the mass of copper, 
So the mass of copper is 2.54 grams. We know that MR of copper, or really the, the AR, is uh, 63.5. We're told that right here. So we can work out the number of moles of copper. It's mass divided by MR. So it's 2.54 divided by 63.5. And that comes to 0 0.04 moles. We are told the mass of water, the mass of H2O, is 0.72 grams. We can work out the MR of water. It's two hydrogen atoms, which have a mass of one, and one oxygen atom, which has a mass of 16, so that's 18. We can therefore work out the number of moles of H2O by doing the mass divided by the MR. So 0.72 divided by 18, and we get 0.04 moles. So you can see the ratio of copper to water is a one to one ratio. There is the same number of copper moles as there are water moles, it is one to one. So you need to look at the equations and find which one has a ratio of copper to water uh, one to one, and that is equation two. There's no number in front of copper, there's no number in front of water, so that is a one to one ratio. Meanwhile, equation one is a two to one ratio. So that means equation two is the correct equation.